Let's talk about dealing with dates in R. And for the longest time, dealing with date information was one of the biggest pains in the butts in all of data processing, mostly because the presentation of time information is inconsistent from source to source. Basically, the ordering of the temporal information, where does the month appear, where does the minute, second, hour, year, and how much temporal information provided is going to be different depending on what data source you're looking at. So you had to spend a lot of time studying exactly what format the date was in and spending a lot of time figuring out how do you get that information into R and extract the relevant bits of it. So if you have timestamps that go down into the seconds and you want to make a bar, pl a bar plot of the minute of the day that we see events occurring in, that was a very non-trivial task back in the day. The good news is, is that the Luberdate package has made working with dates extremely easy. So this is really just a quick overview of how to work with dates with Luberdate because it's no longer a big hassle to work with time information in data, which is everywhere, especially in business analytics. You're going to have the date on which stocks ended up closing. You're going to have the exact timestamp of when someone clicked on a link on a web page. You're going to have dates where a new product was launched, etc., etc. So how does Luberdate work and what are some additional resources? Well, this slide gives you the nitty gritty details over where you can go for additional information, but I think this presentation should suffice. So to illustrate, let's go ahead and just load up the Luberdate package here. And I'm going to read in shelter.csv from Canvas. This has to do with pets that were dropped off at an animal shelter in Austin, Texas. And we see that one of the fields is called date time. Now, when R reads in a data file, it doesn't know that it's dealing with time objects, so by default, it's going to either store it as a character vector or just a categorical variable, a factor. So we can see that, yep, this is time information. Now, how do we actually turn it into a date object and what can we do with that? So here's the trick that we're going to do when using the Luberdate package. What we're going to do is just examine what the first few entries are of the column that contains our time information. And what we're going to do is we're going to note the ordering and the amount of the temporal information that's provided. So in this case, it looks like the first bit of information is the year, then the day, or sorry, the month, then the day, the hour, the minute, the second. Year, month, month, day, hour, minute, second, etc. Now, assuming that all the dates in a particular column are in the same format, and hopefully that is going to be the case, Luberdate provides a really easy way to convert this into a date object and then to extract out any information that you might want. So how do you know what command to use to turn the column that right now a categorical variable into an actual date object? Well, the command simply matches up to the ordering of the temporal information. In this case, because we see year, month, day, hour, minute, second, the command is going to be ymd underscore hms. So I'm going to make a new column called date2 in the pets data frame. We can see that it's a date object. This is actually how R refers to date objects. And I can go from there. Now, what if you have the information in a different order? Well, there's a slide that talks about, all right, how do you figure out which command do you want to use? But it's really easy. Just print out the first few elements of the column or the vector containing the time information and just pay attention to the ordering of the temporal information. So in this case, it looks like we have year, then day, then month, and then maybe the hour in which the uh, item corresponds to. So the command's going to be ydm underscore h. The underscore separates the year, month, day, and the hour, minute, second. Sometimes we don't have any sort of information about hour, minute, second. We might just have year, month, day, in which case the command would be ymd. Pretty easy. Okay, so once we've converted the information into a date object, the class is that POSIX, CT, etc., what can we do with that? Well, we can extract the month of the year, the hour of the day, the day of the year, the second of the day, anything that we want, we can get out of that object. And the commands to do so are pretty intuitive. So in the slides, I have illustration of using the hour command to just extract out the hour of the day that corresponded to that entry. Minute corresponds to just the minute. Day corresponds to, I believe, the day of the year. 
W day corresponds to day of the week, so like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And depending on if you use the extra command label equals true, or the extra argument label equals true, you'll either get out a number or the actual word. So there's a bunch of stuff that you can do, and the commands are pretty intuitive. If I go ahead and just run in all of these, well, it would help to actually run through conversion of this. I'm going to overwrite the date column into uh, the result of running YMD HMN. HMS so I can run these commands just fine. So the original date object, the hour, minute, day, day of the week, day of the week part two, so fourth day of the week, that's a Wednesday, second month of the year, that's a February, and week of the year as well. All of these commands get you there. All right, so what kind of stuff do we do with time information? Well, we can use that as a way to forecast future demand. We can use that as a predictor of the closing price of stock. We can use it as predictor variables in many different models, or we can just study to see what months, what days of the week are more common than others. So a good way to kind of get a summary of what's going on in the time information is with that summary command. So we could say, all right, well, give me a summary of, well, what, maybe month of the year is what we're interested in looking at. So we could say, give me a summary of the month of that date column. So without adding in that extra argument, label equals true, it's really not all that interesting. The smallest value is a 1, the biggest value is a 12. That's January and December. That's not interesting at all. But if we do label equals true, now all of a sudden we get a frequency table that says, ah, well, January has 1,910 entries associated with it. August as 1750 and in fact the same information can be found with table giving us a frequency table which I actually like a little bit better because once we have a frequency table as output from table we can actually make a visualization if I go to bar plot on the results of this table well I get a nice handy visualization for the frequency of each month of the year and I could do this for, say, hour of the day, changing month to hour. Well, label equals true is not something we want to add to the hour function, so let's get rid of that. And so we have some idea for when pets are coming into the shelter. And actually, we can identify an integrity issue. That shelter is not open at midnight, so these entries with zero here, midnight essentially, might correspond to cases where the recorder of this information just didn't know when the pet came in. And so they just put in zero at midnight here. So what about day of the week? Well, W day, let's do label equals true so we can get the words out. Roughly the same, a little bit busier on weekends than during weekdays. And so there we go. So lubricate for converting a categorical variable or character variable that contains time information into an actual data object then W day, hour, minute, etc. to extract out that information. What do we do with that? Well, we can make a bar plot. Another thing that I'll ask you to do quite a bit actually in BAS 474 is to write commands that automatically extract out the most common appearing month or least uh, common appearing month. So I wanted to go over very briefly how that works. So if we looked at a table of the W day, the weekday with the label equals true, we can eyeball it and we can see that, okay, looking at the graph, we see that Thursday is the rarest day to occur and it looks like Sunday is second place, Saturday is first place. Now the nice thing is the output of table is a vector, it's just these numbers, but the special thing about these elements is that they're named. They have names with them, and the names of them are the days of the week. Notice what happens if I type in names of table this, I actually get a vector of names. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So what I can do is sort this table. By default, that's going to go from smallest up to largest. If I say decreasing equals true, that's going to go from largest to smallest. So I can automatically extract out, say, the most common appearing value or the least common appearing value, the name of that, by appending square brackets to the results 
of sorting. So if I just sort here, this is the most common. If I didn't have decreasing equals to true, that goes from least common up to most common, so that's the least, uh, least common uh, day of the week. Now, the output of this is still just a number, but the number has a name to it. So if I actually want the name of that most or least appearing day, names applied to that entire command will tell me this. So the rarest is going to be Thursday, because I've sorted it from smallest to biggest, taken the first element, and then got the name of that. The largest is going to be, and I add in, decreasing equals true. So it starts from biggest to smallest, the very first element. That's the biggest, that's Saturday. If I wanted the third most common, put a three. It's sorted from biggest to smallest, so the third element of that is going to be the third most common thing there. And so that's it. Working with dates, not difficult anymore, thanks to the Lubridate package.